In this episode, we'll show you our passage plan from Georgetown in the Bahamas to Provo in Turks and Caicos. Simon will explain a few things that went wrong on our passage. We get escorted into Blue Haven Marina so we don't hit bottom. Simon explains how we fix the things that we broke. I'll show you around the pontoon and give you a tour of the Blue Haven Marina and Resort. I'll then take you for a ride on the Undersea Explorer, and three families go for a van ride around the whole island seeing beaches, dancing, riding horses, viewing islands, buying beer, and more. I'll also include a few things that live aboard cruisers get up to back on the pontoon, including the children. And eventually we have to have our last hurrah and say goodbye to some friends and to Turks and Caicos. Okay, this is Florida, and we start here in the Bahamas and we're going to the Turks and Caicos. So, came out of Georgetown, up to the point of Long Island, past Crooked Island, then past my iguana, and then into Turks and Caicos. The journey to Turks and Caicos took two nights. Our plan was to arrive at the channel entrance in Provo around 9 a.m. We motored for half the time and sailed for the other half. That is, until we broke something. We've had a bit of adventure last night. Um, our generator stopped working. Our main engine got a leak. And um, what else was it? Oh yeah, the alternator stopped working. <laughs> but the leak happened and I think I found out where it is. And I've got the alternator going. I think I know where the leak's going. And I'm just about to fix the uh, generator. So it's boating. But that's not what I was referencing earlier. Round about here, just as night fell, where the backstay oil seal had gone. It wasn't much of a problem, but it could have been mostly major. But we just put a jury rig on, took the sails down and motored in the rest of the way. When we got into this point here, we called up the uh, marina and they guided us through because of the hurricane had changed all the sand as the entrance come in so we had to actually not we had to sail outside of the um, the channel that is the look of concentration <laughs> entering the marina or should i say what was left of the marina after last year's hurricanes was very easy the kind attendant that ushered us in told us where to put our fenders and lines and as usual, Simon entered the slip with ease. We're a little late in taking the Bahamas flag down, but Sienna's doing her job now. And uh, it looks like our Bahamas flag is in tatters. Okay, go to immigration. At Blue Haven, Customs and Immigration will come to the marina to book you in. The cost is $50 for seven days upon arrival and $50 again upon departure. After seven days, the cost goes up to $300. is working hard to help Simon clean the boat. Yeah, I know the boat. Simon's talking to somebody instead of working as usual. <laughs> and there's a big storm kind of coming. I'm not sure if it's a storm, but the swell is getting up. Uh, it's supposed to be huge out there. So we're staying put. And we've got this lovely neighbor boat. And uh, the resort is back over here. And what you're looking at there is the remnants of the marina after the hurricanes. As you can see, there's not much there. But that's the resort over there. And as far as the marina is concerned, there's one pontoon, I think 22 slips, where they had something like over 100 before. All right, well, here we are in uh, Turks and Caicos. It's absolutely beautiful here. But um, we came from Georgetown and we had a little incident. We didn't film it because it was too dangerous to film and we needed all hands on deck. And what happened is we have a hydraulic system which pulls our backstay, which can pull our mast backwards and forwards, which gives a better shape in our sail. And if you have a look over here, oh look at that, it decided to leak and this was just wobbling like mad and we couldn't do anything so we had to quickly drop the sails, it was pitch dark, 
I've brought my the the topping lift and the main halyard back to support it and then we disconnected everything tied it down and put those straps on and then slowly motored in so but the guy here from Caribbean Marine and Diesel Giles came on the boat within us half an hour of getting in here so thank you Giles that was fantastic and he's ordered the part and hopefully he's gonna come back today. Okay, the parts took about three days to come from the US and Giles fitted it in the shop and then brought it to the boat and we put it on and and uh, fitted it and worked really well. The price of the item was under $100 plus shipping and we were quoted 100 to $150 on labor. What did catch us out was we were getting charged for him leaving his work, driving to the moon and driving back twice, which was over half of the bill, and the total bill was $500. We're really happy with the work, but we're just a bit caught out with him coming in and out and charging us for that over. Over. Why did I say over? <laughs> it's got radio on my mind. <laughs> We've got a great friend on here, Chris, who's got uh, exactly the same boat as we have back in um, Italy, and he's helping us with our AIS because it's suddenly disappeared off there. We can't look at boats, like, but we know that we're broadcasting. We know that it's working and he's trying to help us because I've tried <laughs> and it's not working. <laughs> AI substance, it's back. It's back. It's back. Thanks, yeah. mate. I think Andrew must have played around with it. Yeah, the, layer, the okay. AI's layer turned off. Okay. Yeah. Andrew, we love you. But you, I think you played around with this, switched our AIS off. Don't do it again when you come back, all right, or else. So good news? Yeah, good news. Um, the oil leak that we had, because we were sailing along, it was dripping in a different position. But now with stationary, it's dripped there. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, yeah. And we have a pump, because on a car, you go get the oil sump and you do the sump plug at the bottom and all the oil drains out. And that's easy because you jack it up or whatever. On this one, you can't do it. So I have a pump, and what it is, is that when the engine builds up with pressure, it goes back up that line to where the pump out, where the pump out is, and it's just the nut at the bottom, either right, the seal's gone or it just needs tightening. So right, so it's not a bad it's thing not, at all. It's not a bad thing. Even if it drips, it's, it's not a bad thing for the, you know, it just makes a mess. It's not, it's not going to damage the engine at all. Awesome. I just walked out to get a picture of the sunrise and these guys are right here next to me and there's the sunrise. I took this clip to give you an indication of the tide that comes through here. You'll definitely want to look at the tide before entering. Oh that is so cool. Wow there's two of them. I diving the other day came nose to nose with a 12 foot hammerhead. Oh there's three of them. Three of them? Oh yeah. Yeah, wow. seven over here. One, there, two, three, four, five. There's seven. seven. There right Holy smokes. They're beautiful. So between those boats there is seven nurse sharks. Oh, there's one. Yeah. And the reason the nurse sharks are hanging out is because of this here. They can smell it. I wonder what these guys will make of all the sharks in the water around them. By now you've seen our surroundings on the pontoon. Allow me now to take you for a tour of the grounds. Simon and I are walking along and we noticed all the kids have bare feet. And guess what? And look at... So have we. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't wear shoes. We're now walking by what used to be another pontoon, but was destroyed by the hurricanes. At the end of the jetty where you can access land, you'll also find a fuel station. The day before we left Blue Haven Marina, Simon filled up Britikin. Our friends from Serena One and Pura Vida helped out, and then we returned their favor afterwards. Once you make it to land, you'll find some palm trees, sand, and paths taking you to the office, swimming pool, or along the waterfront. Unfortunately, the Blue Haven that we remember, when we stayed a couple years ago, was quite different. Now over half the bursts are gone, many trees have disappeared, and the upkeep of the volleyball area, the horseshoe pit, 
and other cool activities like the outdoor pool table are no longer usable. The biggest disappointment for us was that the bar was closed. This is the bar that was open two years ago but is now shut and this is the bathroom. It's really quite nice. I haven't used it for two years. I'm going to try and get rid of this. Oh. Yeah, shower was good. Started off really cold but it warmed up. We have had problems this week that we've been here but that's because they switched off the um, the bar and they didn't have the pilot light going. So two of the three showers are working and I forgot my razor. <laughs> At the bar the bathrooms were open to cruisers. Additionally a Wi-Fi signal could be reached not on the pontoons but at the bar. We also decided to bring the bar back to life ourselves so we enjoyed afternoon snacks and drinks in addition to a few nights of cruiser socializing. We came here a week ago and we were on our own and then our great friends turned up. Hello. Pina Vida. And Serena one, Catherine, come here. And this is a bar that's closed, but we have opened it up for us. Another change at Blue Haven was this big long fence that separates the marina from the hotel facilities. The hotel is now all-inclusive, so I assume the fence is to keep non-marina and hotel guests out. As a marina guest, we were given wristbands that allowed us to use the pool and the other facilities. Across from the hotel you'll find a mini market that offers beer, wine, ice, soft drinks, sandwiches, salads, excellent coffee, and a small selection of snacks and even some household items. Let's get out of the marina and resort and check out some things to do around Provo Caicos. Welcome aboard the Undersea Explorer! Wow! And so, what's the color of Lancy's tell everybody? What color was that? Now I'm married my treasure on pirate home under a tree box on the back that on the Seagrass. Snapper and the Black Bar Soldier, they're all part of the Big Eye family. Algae is considered to be a plant. Oh, there's big ones back there. All different ones and sizes. Oh, wow. We're seeing lots of sea rocks. You can take another turtle on top of the sea for up next in front of the boat. So there it is. It's having some yummy seagrass. Also, we're oh, seeing wow. some grunts, some gray snappers. Oh, look at that big one. Yes, that one is another schoolmaster wow. yellow fence. Oh, look at that! To that coral formation. <laughs> These turtles can grow up to be 90 to 100 years old. And so the cool thing about that is that that's actually human years. Switch in precision by going underneath it. So we hired this van. We've got three families, six adults, two, four, five kids. And we're going to tour our Turks and Caicos today. The conch is closed. It's uh, it doesn't exist anymore. Oh no! It was completely ripped. Oh, is it? The conch farm or the conch shed? Oh, we were going to go to the conch farm. We're going to be driving. We're going to go check it out anyway. But it's supposed to be closed. Let's go pick up the sky. Hi. Hi. Wow, 
Yeah, look at the color of that water. With the conch farm being destroyed by the hurricanes, we stopped off to look at a lovely beach. Just look both ways. Okay, so our second stop for today. It's a DIY center. We got a damp red thing for the closet. We got concrumbium, which is mold control for the closet. Some paint brushes and a whisk that we broke. Yeah, we broke the whisk, so we replaced it. It's pretty good prices. Liveaboard cruisers will combine sightseeing, provisioning, and eating all in one trip. As we were leaving Bugaloos, the kids ran into this very kind uh, man who said, hey, I'll give you all a free horse ride if you allow me to take pictures. So uh, we said, okay, and the kids got a free horse ride and loved it. of little islands here. They call them keys. Can you believe we got lost on an island? And actually this wasn't the first time we got lost. We got lost a couple other times. The map is definitely not to scale or remotely accurate. After giving us directions, this kind man hopped in his car and actually drove us out of the area we were in and showed us where to go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, well, the road ends at the dock. Chalk Sound Drive was absolutely stunning, but there wasn't any places to really pull the car over and get out. We did find a couple places, you know, to pull over on the side of the road and just take a look. And uh, we eventually stopped the car and kind of walked down what looked like a path to see all the little keys and islands. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good view. You can hear the water lapping up underneath this, this rock um, and it's kind of overhanging and the water's going underneath it. And it's making quite a really calming sound. We then walked back to the van and got in and kept driving along. There was a lot of damage done to the rooftops in Turks and Caicos, but as a whole the islands looked beautiful and the homes looked very well kept. And this area was just absolutely stunning. The water is the most beautifulest water I think I've ever seen. After our drive, we headed for the discount beer and water shop. Thirty-seven dollars a case. Thirty-seven dollars a case. We're getting two. So I just take that road here. Like Hayward's moves. 
After stocking up on necessities like beer and water, we stopped at Turtle Cove Marina, where the semi-submarine undersea explorer is located, and then went to the touristy town of Grace Bay. At Grace Bay, the children had an ice cream and the adults relaxed to a cold beverage. Before heading back to the marina, we stopped off at a Thai and Chinese restaurant to get takeaway. We all met at the marina bar and enjoyed dinner while discussing our highlights for the day. We got a car full of <laughs> Thai, food. Thai food and we're and ready. Beer. And beer, yeah, we got a lot of beer. Okay, back to the marina. This morning we're having Eggs Benedict on our another boat. And so I'm just frying up some bacon to go with it. Chris on Serena One invited us over and said he could make the best Eggs Benedict in the world. So I said, well, I'm there then. That's for the kids. Oh, no. That's for the kids. That's That's a kid's My mouth is watering. Oh, my. Are you excited? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Here's my lovely plate. <laughs> We're coming here again. Because um, the other people had like, I think as you know, a 45 deck saloon. And then the other ones had a cap, so we always ate on the How's it taste, guys? Every Sunday morning. Good. Yeah, we have, Do we have big thumbs up? We have this. Um, <laughs> and as usual, all gatherings with cruisers eventually lead to passage planning and discussing where it's good to go and not go. That's it there. And then that's, I guess that's where you guys are. Yeah, that's where we right there, yeah. When the parents were all getting their work done, like fixing things or provisioning or cleaning the boat, the kids had free time to go use the facilities, the pool, go out to the beach, and when they were on board, they'd be playing games, watching movies, playing the computer. It truly is an incredible life for children on boats. The time eventually came for us to have our last supper together. Serena One was heading to Cuba. We were buddy boating with Pura Vida until the next Turks and Caicos Island and then planned on heading to Puerto Rico and Pura Vida was heading for the Dominican Republic. We all congregated on the pontoon before leaving to say our goodbyes. And we're waiting for a pilot boat to come and take us out through the channel. We'll see you later. We got Pura Vida coming out too. Got this pilot boat that is going to take us out so that we don't hit bottom. We'll see, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Look at this water. Man, it's just beautiful. What's the depth we got? Point nine. Point nine. Point four below the keel. Okay. Point five. Almost out. Wow, look at those waves breaking over there. This is cool. Thank you, Turks and Caicos, for having us. Yeah, thank you, Turks and Caicos, for having us again. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Turks and Caicos. Here are some clips from our future episodes. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get notified. The fact that we think it's a yellowfin tuna. Okay, so we're anchored. We'll get anchored. Are we playing Candy Crush? No. no we're playing Little and Little. Because it's called the flag. No. Okay. Should, it, should this look like this? No. I'm... And look at there's a jellyfish there. He has good if you'd like to see videos about sailing, destinations, how-tos, marina reviews, and more, please support our channel by purchasing one of our sailing guides. 
Join the thousands of people that have already purchased our guides to get information that will save you money, provide practical tips and tricks, in addition to helping you get out and enjoy boating. Or if you're not in the need for helpful how-to information and checklists, buy one of our high-quality nautical t-shirts, beach cover-ups, and other nautical gifts at our Etsy shop. We also have a lovely community of Patreon supporters too, if that's something you're interested in. Links to all of these resources can be found in the description below. These educational and hopefully entertaining videos are made possible by the profits made through our guides, t-shirt sales, and Patreon supporters. To keep them going for free, please support Sailing Britican today.